I'm out of it. So uh, this is going to be a rough one. And I'm plowing through this. Even if it fucking sucks, I'm not stopping it and re-recording it like I did last week. Because that ended up getting me in trouble. That's how I started talking about that Dr. Laura shit last week. And I got to say, for the first time, maybe the second time ever, I'm nominating myself as Douchebag of the Week. Because last week I actually supported Dr. Laura because I had no fucking idea who she was. And, uh, you know, I was having a rough time doing the podcast. I needed some fodder. Somebody sent me an email. What do you think about this? And I watched like a 10-second clip of evidently a five-minute clip. And I just thought she was imitating some, something she saw in Def Jam. So I was like, well, she's quoting it. She's not calling anybody that word, but the, 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 the and all that bullshit. And then, geez, oh, Jesus, the fucking emails came in from, uh, evidently, uh, from my 14 podcast listeners, evidently like six of them are uh, African-American. Um, and, uh, yeah, they read me the riot act in different stages. And uh, I got to admit, they were fucking right because I didn't I, – you know something? My uninformed logic is usually funny that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about and I go off on shit and I realize that uh, race probably isn't one that you should probably do that on. I didn't know that she was like uh, like Rush Limbaugh with a cunt. I had no idea. I just, you know, I didn't know the fuck she was. I thought she was some soccer mom with a podcast, you know? And she was like, all the crazy kids out there are fucking blah, blah, blah. I had no idea. So, all right. Fucking eggs on my face. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, so I got, I got fucking trashed. Um, I took a little heat off of Mel Gibson, I bet. But he got a couple of less uh, fucking hate mails last week. So I apologize. I don't know who she is. I'm not going to apologize for my stupidity. But in the future, when it's something you know race-related, I, I will try to be a little more informed. All right? Well, I got to find this fucking email where this guy fucking trashed me. You know, he said, uh, da, 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 da. let's see, he goes, it starts off good, just trashing me, which I totally get. He goes, just like in your bit you did about the Jimmy the Greek thing, it's best for white people to just leave it alone. Dr. Laura may be old, but she's aware enough to know what happens to white people when they say the N-word or bring up racial supremacy theories. See, that's the part of the tape I didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> I showed up late to that rally, you know. By the time I showed up, they'd already put the cross out. You know, everybody's hoods, they took them off. It was a hot day. I didn't know what I was walking into. I thought it was like a fucking, you know, AA meeting or something. You know, we're all over by the table having donuts. It's my fault. I came in late. Um, so anyways, uh, he said the podium comes out. So I'm surprised you defended Dr. Laura in this case. That's what I got a lot of. I'm surprised you defended her. Because I watched eight seconds of the tape because I'm a moron. Um, I don't understand why there's any debate about racial inequality. Why any debate about racial inequality always comes down to comedians and deaf comedy jam? I don't think it does, but evidently uh, in your world, maybe it does. Um, I've heard this argument before. Well, black comedians say this and and that about white people and say the N-word. Why can't I? Is it fair for minority comedians? Blah, 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 and all, basically all, that's, all that shit. Uh, I'm trying to get to this part here. So then he was talking about this documentary he saw where some comic was saying, you know, making a joke. This is actually a good joke where white people are like, why can't I say the N-word? Uh, and then the dude was like, oh, it's Chris Rock. Well, why do you even want to say it, right? Great fucking joke. Totally makes sense. Uh, and then the punchline is, I've sailed the world. I've fucked Raquel Welch. If I could just say the N-word, my life would be complete. Uh, and then this dude writes after that. He goes, I think that it bothers white people because... You're not used to being told that you can't do something. White people used to be able to do and say anything they wanted. Now there's all these rules. Isn't that fucking that, – that part of the email, that's where it just went off the fucking rails for me. You know what I mean? It's like I totally get it. She's a fucking idiot. I didn't realize it because I watched that short little clip, you know? I shouldn't have support that shit. And, and you're offended by that, which I totally get. And then in the end, you make some dumb general, generalization about white people. See, we're all the same. We're fucking morons. Jesus Christ. I've sailed the world. Fuck Markel Welch. See, that part's the joke. But this here is what he writes. Bothers white people that you're not being used to told, being told that you can't do something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just run around doing whatever the fuck we want to do. It's great. Ah, Jesus Christ. 
that's that's one of the great stereotypes is that we're all Kennedys living on fucking Martha's Vineyard rather than fucking, you know, the majority of white people aren't, aren't the majority of white people sitting in cubicles, not living their dream, drowning in a sea of fucking debt, trying to get health insurance. Isn't that the majority of fucking white people? Evidently not. Evidently, according to this guy, white people have yachts. <laughs> Sailing the world. All 300 million of us. You know, did you see it during that the, the Gulf War, uh, the Gulf spill there? You know, that was one of the biggest problems. All those white people, all the 300 million white people with our fucking yachts just sailing around. Oh, it's so awesome to be white. You can just walk, you can do what and say whatever you want to do. It's fucking incredible. Um, that's an argument I've, I've gotten into uh, with, uh, um, I think, every fucking, yeah. Female comics, black comics, every fight. They just go, yeah, it's easy for you. All you got to do is show up, man. Oh, yeah, that's all it is. I don't even audition. I just lay here and they, they call me up. And I'm like, why Why did you give me that part? Because you're white. Here you go. You don't have to work for shit. Uh, you know, that's that class. You know, that's that fucking double standard right there. Okay, now we're opening a whole nother can of worms. Let's talk race for the next couple of weeks, people. This ought to bring out a lot of ugliness. Um, that's that classic fucking, like, that's one of those statements. Like, you, if you flip that thing, what you just said there, that generalization that you made of, of white people, that basically what? We just sit around and they, people just give us shit and we can do whatever the fuck we want to do. You're basically going to define us by the Illuminati. Um... If you flip that around and somebody white says that about another race of people, then they're in like a Mel Gibson situation. All right? Now, I'm open this up for discussion. I'm not open this up for fucking rednecks to come on here uh, and be like, yeah, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm not saying it like that. You know what? I like that this podcast is this difficult. Now you guys can relate to me. You know, you're sitting there in your goddamn cubicles on a fucking Monday. Unless you're white. Of course, you're out on your yacht, you know, chatting it up with a Kennedy. Hey, when's the stock market going to crash again? Give me the heads up. Don't tell the Puerto Ricans. <laughs> That's what it's like. That's exactly what it's like. There's not white people working farms, slaves to corporations. <laughs> nah, not at all. Not at all. All you do, you, do, you don't have to get up. You don't have to get up. I spent nine years in bed. Just because I was white and they just fucking hilarious. I made more money then than when I worked. That's how great it is to be white. It's so fucking easy. And thank God for people who aren't white, who've never been white, to tell me what it's like to be white. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Let me tell you something about being white, white guy. This is how good it is. Oh, yeah? What are you, reincarnated? Was your name Frank in another life? Um, is that a white guy name? I don't fucking know. All right. So anyway, so I've pissed off a bunch of people. And uh, this week, I felt fucking horrible about that. Even though I've been kind of a cunt again this week. That's what I do. You know, you came back, didn't you? You know, I don't know any better. I'm just a white guy laying in bed. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I've had disappointment in my life. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen, you know. You know, sometimes the sail on my schooner will break, and I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. And then I call the government, and I say, hey, can you, uh, can you send me another one? They're like, wait a minute, what color are you? I say, I'm white. They go, oh, there you go. Right on the way, you know. I agree with the first half of the email of this guy I'm making fun of, but I would love to send this guy my fucking taxes. I really would. All right, so there you go. That was that was my that was my roundabout apology. Uh, no, seriously, I really felt bad about that. I felt like an ignorant ass, and uh, rather than just immediately come on and apologize, I left it up there for the week so I'd get my nice pounding from everybody. And uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I fuck around. I say a lot of fucked up shit, but I, you know, I'm trying to start your week off right. I'm not trying to piss you off. Although there's probably a lot of women out there who would fucking disagree. But, you know, it's comedy. You know, people people get hurt. That's how it fucking works. This is the worst apology ever. But it's coming from the heart. All right, so go fuck yourselves. That's how we got to end it. All right? I grew up with no hugs. 
So if I'm trying to be fucking nice, it has to end with go fuck yourself.